that ugly monkey Smith would drive us into a ditch or against a tree. I couldn't see your hand in front of you. I'm glad you had me sitting back with you, Mum. If I'd been up front with that monkey, oh, he can't keep his dusty hands to himself. Give him half a chance and he's pinching me on the leg or you know where. Oh, asking your pardon, ma'am, but it's true. Oh, don't mind. I, I, I really love the fall. Oh, they say it's good for the complexion. Yes, it, it hides you from the world and, and the world from you. Because everything has changed and nothing is what it seems to be. No one can find or touch you anymore. I wouldn't care so much if Smith was a fine, handsome man like some chauffeurs I've seen. I mean, if it was all in fun for having a decent girl. But girl shriveled work like Smith. I told him, you must think I'm hard up if you think I notice a monkey like you. I warned him. One day I'll give him a cloak that'll knock him into next week. And so I will. It's the fourth one. I kept you with me, and, and you can take a big drink of whiskey to her when you go. <laughs> yes, Mom, that's the one thing I make her cheerful. She loves her drop. <laughs> and you have a drink if you wish. Oh, I don't think I'd better, Mom. Well, maybe one won't harm. <laughs> oh, here's your good health, Mom. I really did have good health once, Kathleen, but that was so long ago. The master short and notice was gone from the bottle. He see I have a heart for that. Oh, no, no, no. We'll play Jamie's trick on him. Just measure a few drinks of water and add them to the bottle. Oh. <laughs> God save me, it'll be half water. He'll know what to taste. Oh, no. He'll be so drunk tonight, he won't know the difference. And he has such a good excuse, he believes, to drown his sorrows. Well, it's a good man's failing. I wouldn't give a tronine for teetotal. They know my spirits. Good excuse. Oh, you mean our Master Edmund, ma'am? I can tell the Master's worried about him. Don't be silly, mm -hmm. Kathleen. Touch of grip is nothing. And all Mr. Tyrone is worried about is money and property. He, he's a very peculiar man. Well, he's a fine, handsome, kind gentleman. Just the same, ma'am. Never mind his weakness. Speaking of acting, how is it you never went on the stage? I? Put that absurd notion into your head. Before I met Mr. Tyrone, I never knew anything about the theatre. I, I was a very pious girl. I, I was going to become a nun. I never had the slightest desire to be an actress. Well, I can't imagine you a holy nun, ma'am. Sure, you never darkened the door of a church. God forgive you. I've never felt at home. I've never felt at home in the theater, even though when I went on tour with Mr. Tyrone, and I never felt close to the people in his company. Oh, they were very kind to me, and I was kind to them, but they had nothing to do with my life, and it always came between me and. But let's not talk about old things that cannot be helped. fog is getting us. I can hardly see the road. Everybody in the world could pass by and I never see them. It's getting dark. Oh, please. Oh, it was very kind of you to keep me company. And while I went uptown, I would have been so lonely driving uptown alone. Sure. Wouldn't I rather ride in a fine automobile than stay here and listen to Bridget's lies about her relations? It was like a vacation, Mum. The man in the drugstore acted when I gave him the prescription for you. Oh, he invented something. Oh. <laughs> what, 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 what prescription? What, what medicine? What? I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, yes, I've forgotten. Uh, what did the man say? Well, it, important. it mattered to me then. I'm not used to being treated like a thief. He gave me a long look and said insultingly, And where did you get hold of this? And I said, It's none of your damn business. But if you must know, it's for the lady I work for, Mrs. Tyrone, who's sitting out in the automobile. Oh, that shut him up quick. He gave a look out at you and said, oh, and went to get the medicine. <laughs> yes, he knows me. It's, it's what I take. It's all I can take to, to kill the pain. I mean, all the pain in my, in my hands, I mean. They were once musicians' hands, Kathleen. I used to love to play the piano. And I worked so hard at the concert with my music. Mother Elizabeth 
was in my, my music teacher said that I was the best student that they'd remembered. And, and my father, he, he was going to send me to Europe after I graduated, but I, I fell in love with Mr. Tyler and Walt. I said, oh, I have two dreams. One was to become a nun. That, that was the more beautiful one. And <laughs> the other was to become a concert pianist. I haven't touched the piano in so many years. Look at my hands back then. They're so ugly, so maimed and crippled. Well, I won't look at them. They're worse than the foghorn for reminding me. But even they can't hurt me now. I see them. They're far away, but the pain is gone. Well, take in some of the medicine. If I didn't know better, it made you act funny, and if I didn't know better, I'd think you'd have drop taken. <laughs> it kills the pain. You go back, and for this last you are beyond its reach. Only the past, when you are happy, is real. Oh, if you think Mr. Tyrone is handsome now, you should have seen him when I first met him. He was a great matinee idol then. Oh, I, I remember I was so excited when my father had written to me and told me that he and James Tyrone had become friends and, and that we were going to go and see them act. Oh, the play was about a... French Revolution, and, and the leading part was a great nobleman. Oh, I couldn't keep my eyes off of him. I wept when he was thrown into prison. <laughs> and then my father said that we could go into the dressing room after the, after the play, and so we did. I, I remember I, I, I was so bashful. All I could do was stammer and, and, and act like a little fool. But I knew he liked him from the first moment that we were introduced. Oh, I, I was so pretty then, Catherine, and, and he was more handsome than my wildest dreams in his makeup and his nobleman's costume. Oh, he was so handsome, but yet he, he was so kind and unassuming. Oh, and I fell in love with him right then and there. And so did he. He told me so afterwards. I, I forgot all about becoming a nun or a concert <laughs> pianist. <laughs> I wanted was to become his wife. That was 36 years ago, and I can see it as clearly as if it were tonight. In all those 36 years, uh, there's never been a breath of scandal, I, I mean with any other woman, and oh, that has made me so happy. It has well, made me forgive so many things. He's a fine gentleman, and you're a lucky woman. Can I take the drink to Bridget now, Mom? It must be dear, near, near dinner time. If she don't get something to quiet her temper, she'll be after me with a cleave. <laughs> you won't be alone long. The master and the boy can wait. No, 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 they won't come. But if you can serve dinner promptly at half past six, I, I'm not very hungry, but I'll, I'll sit at the table and, and we'll get it over. You ought to eat something, Mum. It's a queer medicine takes away your appetite. Oh, I, I don't know what you mean. I don't know this man. Take the drink to Bridget, will you? Yes, Mum.
because he has a place that has left and he won't be home. Oh, I'm afraid that Jamie's been lost to us for a long time, dear. Be quiet, Mama. It's hard to believe seeing him as he is now that he was ever once my my baby. Do you remember, dear, what a happy, healthy baby he was? And oh, and Jane was too for the two years that he lived before I died for my blood. God, I'm a fool to come home. Papa, shut up! Who would have ever believed that Jamie would grow up to disgrace us? I mean, after he went to boarding school, we received such glowing reports. And <coughs> such a pity. Poor Jamie. It's hard to understand. No, it isn't. It isn't at all. You brought him up to be a boozer. From the moment he opened his eyes, he saw you drinking. And when he was a baby and then he was sick, your remedy was to give him a teaspoonful of whiskey. So it's my fault that that lazy hug Hulk has made a drunken loafer of himself. When you have the poison in you, you want to blame anyone but yourself. Anyway, it's true. I can remember that teaspoonful of whiskey every time I woke up with a nightmare. Yes, you were always having nightmares as a, as a child. You were, you were born afraid. Oh, I don't think I, I blame your father. It's not his fault. He came from the worst kind of poverty-stricken Irish, and I'm sure that they firmly believe that whiskey was good medicine for a child who was sick or afraid. Papa. Are we going to have that drink or aren't we? Yes. Who will pay any attention? Uh, Drink hard, he laughed. I, I, I didn't mean to be so bitter, James. Forgive me. Huh? I, I kept Kathleen with me here this afternoon. I, I was so lonely. I needed someone to talk to. And do you know what I was telling her, dear? About the night that, that I came to your dressing room and I, I first fell in love with you. You remember? Oh, James. I never forget, Mary. Oh, I know you love me in spite of everything. Yes, yes, God is my witness. Yes, always and forever. And I love you in spite of everything. But I, I, I must confess, James, that I, I would have never married you if I knew that you drank so much. <laughs> do, you, do you remember? Do you remember the night? The, your barroom friends, they, they brought you up to our hotel door room and, and they knocked on the door and ran away and left you there on the floor. But when I came to the door, that was on our honeymoon. Do you remember, dear? No, I don't remember. It wasn't on our honeymoon. I never in my life had to be helped into bed or missed a performance. I had waited hour after hour for you, making excuses for you. I became terrified and I got on my knees afraid that nothing had happened. I didn't know how often that was to happen in the years to come. How many times I was to wait in hotel rooms. <laughs> I got quite used to it, James. Christ, no wonder. What about dinner? It must be time. Yes, it must be. Mary, can't you forget? made of such delicate, beautiful lace. And, and I had beautiful white flowers in my veil. And, oh, and there was in the back a bustle of things that were just so real. And, oh, and in the basque, it was so tight. I remember I, I, I had to be fitted in it. And, and the waist was so small. So beautiful. I used to take it out from time to time when I was lonely. It used to make me cry. This was <coughs> me a long time ago. I Taken to drink or talk. Papa, shut up! 
treated Kathleen and Bridget. Isn't that it, Mama? Yes. They, they work hard for poor wages. Why don't you like it like James? Getting dark and Edmund has proved to you time and time again that it doesn't cost much to light one bulb. It isn't one bulb, I mind. Having one on here and one on there that makes the electric company rich. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a fool to talk reason to you. I'll get us a fresh bottle of whiskey, lad. We'll have ourselves a real drink. He's going up to the outside cellar door to let the servants want to see him. He's a very strange man. <laughs> Mama, you haven't even asked me what I found out this afternoon. Don't you care a damn? Don't say that. You hurt me. I've got a serious. Mama, I have to go to a sanatorium. Go away. No, I won't have it. I won't have it. I, I know why he went you sent to a sanatorium. He's always been jealous of my babies. He, he knows that I loved you most because Mama, I had... stop it, please. Won't you stop it? Will you stop blaming him? I've been away so much that I've never noticed it broke your heart. I'm afraid you're not very sensitive after all. Don't, Mama. Talk about loving me, and you won't even listen when I try to tell you how sick I am. If I gave you the slightest encouragement, the next thing you'd be telling me is that you're going to die. People do die of it. Your own father did. Don't you mention him. It's not the same thing. He had consumption. Oh, I hate it when you become morbid and gloomy. And I forbid you to talk about my father's death, do you hear me? Yes, I hear you, Mama. I wish to God I hadn't. You know, it's pretty hard to take at times, having a dope fiend for a mother. Oh, please, I'm sorry, forgive me. I didn't mean that, but you made me so angry. You hurt me, Mama. I can't stay here. I don't want to be there. I have to leave. Hmm. I hope someday that I take an overdose, but I can't do it deliberately because then the blessed virgin should never forgive me. The lock fell scratch. The drunken lover tried to pick the lock with the lock. Where's Edmund? He went out. Oh, James. It is just the summer cold. <laughs> oh, James! I'm so afraid. I know he's going to die. I just know it. Oh, I should have never born him. Then he would never know that I'm a dope fiend and hate me. Oh, he loves you. You know there was a curse put on you without you willing it. He's proud you're his mother. But now there comes Kathleen. <coughs> Take more of the goddamn poison, is it? You'll be like a mad ghost before the night's over. Why are you 
There's such many fairies. Fairies. Such a crowd of journey I have you. Edmund? Yes. Well, I'm glad you've come, lad. I've been damn lonely. Christ, one light bulb? Oh, haven't I proved to you, I don't know how many times, if you left one bulb burning all night, it wouldn't add up to so much as one drink. How the hell are you figures? The proof is in the bills I have to pay. Oh, yes, facts mean nothing to you, do they? What you want to believe, that's all that matters. Shakespeare was an Irish Catholic, for example. So he was, and the proof is in his plays? Well, he wasn't, and there's no proof of it in his plays except for you. The Duke of Wellington. Oh, there's another good Irish Catholic. And he was a good one. He was a renegade, but a Catholic just the same. Well, he wasn't. And, there's, and you just can't believe that no one but an Irish Catholic general could defeat Napoleon. <laughs> Don't put out that damn light. No, 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 no. Let them all burn. Let them burn to hell with them. Its final end is the poorhouse. It might as well come sooner than later. Uh, that's my grand curtain. That's right. <laughs> Laugh at the poor old fool. Poor old ham. <laughs> the final curtain's in the poor house just the same. That's not comedy. Well, well, let's not argue. You'll live to learn the value of a dollar, and like that damn tramp of a brother of yours, where is he, by the way? Well, I walked out on the beach. I haven't seen him since this afternoon. Well, if you split the money I gave you with him like a fool, he's probably in the whorehouse. It's a fit place for him. He's got a loftier dream than whores and whiskey. Oh, Jesus, you got to you're going to start that, I'll just leave. All right, all right, I'll stop. I'll stop. All right. God knows I don't like the subject any more than you do. Can you join me in the drink, lad? <laughs> now you're talking. <laughs> well, if you went out to the beach, you're probably damp and chilled. Well, I dropped in at the end of the way out the back. It wasn't the kind of night I'd pick for a long walk. I love the fog. Where I wanted to be. You have more sense. Oh, the hell with sense. We're all crazy. It's been a long the days of wine and roses. Within a misty dream, I've half emerges for a while and closes within a misty dream. Fog is where I wanted to be. If we're down the path, we couldn't see this house. We didn't need any light. Because the look and sound was so unreal. As if the fog and the sea were part of one. Walking on the bottom of the sea, as if I had drowned long ago. I was a ghost of the fog, and the fog was a ghost of the sea. And this damn peace will be nothing more than a ghost within a ghost. Oh, don't look at me as if I've gone nutty. I'm talking sense. Who wants to see life as it is if they can help it? It's Pan. He looks at you and you die. Inside you, that is. You have to go on living as a ghost. You're a poet in your right, but a damn morbid one. Devil take your pessimism, I feel low-spirited enough as it is. Why can't you remember your Shakespeare and forget the third rater? To find what you're trying to say in him? We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. Fine, that's beautiful, but that wasn't what I was trying to say. We are such stuff as manure is made on. So let's drink up and forget it. That's more my idea. I shouldn't have given you the drink. I've had quite a while on you too, Papa. Oh, even if you've never missed a performance. What the hell's wrong with being drunk anyway? It's what we're after. You know what we're trying to forget. Well, all we can do is try to be resigned again. So drunk. 
drunk you could forget. He always drunken. Nothing else matters. That is the only question. Do you not feel the horrible burden of time weighing on your shoulders and crushing you to the earth? You're drunken continually. But what? But why, with poetry or with virtue, as you will, but be drunken? <laughs> and if on the steps of the palace, on the green side of the ditch, or the dreary solitude of your own room, you waken, and the drunkenness be half or wholly slipped away from you, ask of the wind, of the star, of the bird, of the clock. What ask, ask what hour it is, and the wind will reply. It is the hour to be drunken. <laughs> be drunken if you would not be martyred slaves to time. Be drunken continually. With wine, with poetry, or with virtue, as you will. <laughs> well, I wouldn't worry about the virtue part of it, if I were you. <laughs> ah, it's morbid pessimism. But little truth is in it, you'll find nobly said in Shakespeare. You recited it well, lad. Who wrote it? Baudelaire. Never heard of him. <laughs> he also wrote a poem about Jamie in the Great oh, White Way. Oh, that loafer. I hope he misses the last crawl and doesn't get home now. He knew he was French. He died before Jamie was born. Never saw Broadway. He knew him in little old New York just the same. With heart at rest, I climb the citadel. Steep height and saw the city from a tower. Hospital, brothel, prisons and such hell. Where evil comes up softly like a flower. Thou knowest those Satan's patron of my pain. Not for vain tears I went up at that hour. But sad old faithful liquor came. To drink the light of that enormous trough, whose hellish beauty makes me young again. Why did I sleep with heavy vapors full, sodden with day, on newer perils stand, in the golden lace veils of evening beauty? I love the infamous city, harlot sand, hunted have pleasures their own to give. The vulgar herd can never. Where you get your taste in authors, that damn library of yours, Voltaire, Rousseau, Ibsen, Nietzsche, atheists, fools, madmen, and your poets as Baudelaire, Poe, Oscar Wilde, Walt Whitman, degenerates and whoremongers. When I have three good sets of Shakespeare you can read. They say he was a South too, you know. Yeah, right. Well. He liked his glass, a good man failing. But he didn't drink his brain into morbidness and filth. Like that dirty little pack you've got, your nasty Zola and your Dante Gabriel Rossetti, who was a dope fiend. You don't seem to be able to stay off on pleasant topics, do we, Papa? <laughs> and besides, you can't accuse me of not knowing Shakespeare. Didn't I once win five dollars from you when you bet me that I couldn't learn a leading part of his in a week, as you used to do in stocks in the old days? And I recited it letter perfect. You gave me the keys. So you did. I remember what an ordeal it was, hearing you murder the line. <laughs> Why doesn't she go to bed up there? She's still scuttling around. For Christ's sake, Papa, forget it. How about another drink? I hope she doesn't come down. I see nothing more than ghosts haunting the past by now. Before I was born. Well, I expect before she even knew me. You'd think the only happy times in her life were in her father's home or in the convent, praying and playing the piano. You must take her memories with a grain of salt, lad. Her wonderful home was ordinary enough. And her father wasn't the great noble Irish gentleman she makes him out. No, he was a nice enough man, good talker, good company. She condemns my drinking, but she forgets his. It's true he never touched a drop till he was 40, but after that he made up for lost time. <laughs> Became a steady champagne drinker, the worst kind. <laughs> that was his grand pose, to drink only champagne. Well, it finished him soon enough. That is a consumption. You don't seem to be able to stay off on pleasant topics, do we, Papa? How would you like to join in a game or two of cards, lad? If you can't shut down until Jamie gets here, which I hope he won't. I don't want to go upstairs until she's gone to sleep. Neither do I. Ah, uh, her dream of becoming a concert pianist. It was an idea put into their heads by the nuns to flatter her. She was their pet. They loved her because she was so devout. Well, they're innocent enough women anyway, innocent in the ways of the world. And the idea that she might become a nun, that's the worst. Your mother was the most beautiful girl you could ever see. She knew it, too. A bit of a rogue and a coquette. 
beneath the shyness and blushes. She was bursting with life and vitality and the love of loving. Can you take off your hand, Papa? I just think the cave gets some blank walls she builds around it. But it's more like a bank of fog that she hides and loses herself in. You know something in her does it deliberately. It's like in spite of loving us, she hated us, Papa. It's not her, it's the poison. And you know she takes it to get that effect. Well, she did this time. It mustn't be too hard on her lad. She's had a great fright about this illness of yours, despite her pretending. She's not responsible once that poison gets a hold of anyone. It never should have gotten a hold of her. You know she's not to blame. If you had spent the money for a decent doctor at the start when she was so sick after I was born, she would have never known morphine existed. Well, well you, you must see my side of it, lad. How was I to know I was that kind of a doctor? You had a good reputation? Oh, among the souses of the hotel bar, I suppose. That's a lie. I asked the hotel proprietor to recommend the best yes, doctor. Yes, and at the same time moaning poorhouse and showing that, that you wanted a cheap one. I know your system. Thank God I ought to after this afternoon. What about this afternoon? Oh, never mind that. We're talking about Mama. Hm. After you found out she'd been made a morphine addict, why didn't you send her to a cure then? At the start, well, she still had a chance. I bet all you thought she needed was to use a little willpower. That's still what you believe in your heart, isn't it? I, I don't think that is. I don't that way anymore. What did I know about morphine? It was years before I knew what the trouble was. And why didn't I send her to a cure, you say? Didn't I? I spent thousands upon thousands in cures. A waste. It always goes back to it. Because you've never given her anything that's made her want to stay off of it. No home except for this summer dump in a place she hates. Dragging her on the road season after season on its work one night stands. Making her sit night after night in dirty hotel rooms waiting for you to come back with a bun on after the bar's closed. Christ, isn't it any wonder she didn't want to be cured? Jesus, when I think about it, Papa, I hate your guts! Edmund! How dare you speak to me like that, you insolent young cub! After all I've done for you! Oh, we'll come to that. What you're doing for me. Well, I never... Dragged her out on the road against her will. Naturally, I wanted her with me. I loved her, and I wanted her to be with me. And she came with me because she loved me, and she wanted to be with me. And that's the truth. No matter what she says when she's not in her right mind. And I let her have the children with her. And I insisted, in spite of the expense, on having a nurse to travel with her. Oh, yes, your one generosity. And that because you were jealous of her paying too much attention to us. That was another mistake. If she had to take care of me by herself when she was so sick after oh, I was you, then she might have been able to stay off of it. things by the way she says when she's not in her right mind, if you hadn't been born! I know that's what she really feels. No, she doesn't. She doesn't, lad. She loves you as dearly as mother ever loved a child. Oh. I only said that because you put me in such a goddamn rage, rigging up the past, saying you hated me. <laughs> I didn't mean it, Papa. I'm like Mama. I can't help liking you in spite of everything. Well, I might say the same thing for you, lad. In no great shakes of the sun, but it's the case of a poor thing but mine own. <laughs> now what happens to our card game? Who's handed it? Yours, I think. Now, you mustn't let yourself be too upset by this bad news you've had today. The doctors say that if you obey orders from this place where you're going, in six months to a year, you'll be cured. Don't kid me, Papa. You don't believe that. You think I'm going to die, don't you? That's a lie. You're crazy. So I waste the money. That's why you're sending me to a state bar. Don't lie about it. You know damn well Hilltown Sanatorium is a state institution. D James suspected as much, and he wormed the truth out of Dr. Hardy. Uh, 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 no, it's not, not true the way you look at it. What if it is a state institution? That's nothing against it. Why not take advantage of it? It's my right and yours. We're residents. I'm a property owner taxed to death. A property valued at a quarter of a million. My small mortgage. Why didn't the specialists know what you're worth? I wonder what they thought when they heard you crying poorhouse and showing that you wanted to wish me on charity. I only told them I wasn't a millionaire who could afford a millionaire sanatorium. I told them I was land poor, and that's the truth. And 
Then you went to meet McGuire at the club afterwards. And you let him sting you with another piece of bum property, bastard! Don't lie about it! Jimmy uh, and I ran into him at the club afterwards. Jimmy was shitting him about you, hulking you, and he winked and laughed. Don't you dare lie about it! God, Papa, ever since I've gone to see and bed on my own, I've known what hard work for little pay was like. I've known what it's like to be broke and starving and to camp on park benches because I had no place else to sleep. I've tried to be fair to you because I know what you went through when you were a kid. Right, you have to make allowances in this family, you go nuts. I've tried to feel like Mama, and you can't help being what you are when money is concerned. Oh, but God almighty, this last stunt of yours is too damn much. Don't talk to me like that. In trying to think about it, it makes me want to puke. You're drunk. To think when it's a matter of your own son having consumption, you could show yourself up before the whole town to be such a stinking old tightwad? Don't have you speak to me like that. Don't you know Hardy will talk? The whole damn town will know? Haven't you any pride or shame, Papa? Well, I'll be goddamned if I go to any state institution just to save you a few lousy dollars so you can buy more fuck from you stinking old visor! Stop coughing. Stop coughing, man. <laughs> Well, I want to be like it well! <laughs> you, need, you need a bracer, lad. You look a little, look a little weak, lad. Have a drink. Stop coughing. Take your drink. Stop coughing. <laughs> Stinking old miser, is it? Maybe you're right. Maybe I can't help being. Although ever since I've had anything, I've thrown money across the bars to buy a drink for everyone in the house. I loan money to souses, I knew it'd never pay it back. <coughs> but that was in the bar rooms. When I was full of whiskey. I can't think like that when I'm sober in my own home. It was at home I first learned the value of a dollar and the fear of the poorhouse. I've always thought my luck had changed, and everything would be taken away. Still, the more property you own, the safer you think you are. You think you knew what I was up against as a boy? How could you? You've had everything. <coughs> oh, I know you've had a bit of hard work with your back and hands. <coughs> of being homeless and penniless in a foreign land, and I respect you for it. But it was a game of romance and adventure to you. It was play. I think you know the value of a dollar. When I was 10 years old, my father deserted my mother and went back to Ireland to die, which he did soon enough and deserved to, and I hope he's roasting in hell. He mistook rat poison for sugar or flour or something. My bet is, is it wasn't a mistake. More morbidness. Anyway, my mother was left a stranger in a strange land with four small children. No damned romance in our poverty. Twice we were evicted from the miserable <coughs> hovel we call home. My mother's few sticks of furniture thrown out on the street, and my mother cried, my sisters cried, and I cried too. Although I tried not to, because I was a man of the house at ten years old. No more school for me. To go to work in a machine shop, 12 hours a day, learning to make files. You think of work. You know what I got for it? 50 cents a week. That's right, 50 cents a week. <coughs> My mother had to wash and scrub for the Yanks by the day. I remember one Christmas and maybe Thanksgiving. One of the Yanks in whose house the mother had been working gave her an extra dollar for a present. And on the way home, she spent it all on food. I remember her hugging us and kissing us. And the tears of joy coming down her tired face, crying. Glory be to God, for once in our life, there'll be enough for all of us. Dear, sweet, brave woman, I'm sweeter, braver. I'm braver, Papa. One great
great deal as if she'd get sick and old and die in the poor house. It was in those days I learned to be a miser. You have to look for bargain flats. If I took this state farm thing for a bargain, you'll have to forgive me. The doctor said it was a good place for you to go. You must, you must realize that, Tim. I can go anywhere you want. Anywhere I can afford. Doesn't matter what the cost is. Anywhere you want to go. Within reason. What about our game, Papa? You know, maybe life overdid the lesson for me and made a dollar worth too much. Time came and that mistake ruined my career as a fine actor. Never told this to anyone before, Edmund, but tonight I feel so heartsick and at the end of things. I'll see you so fake pride and pretense. That goddamn play I bought for a song and made such a success, of such a money success, ruined me with its temptation of an easy fortune. Audiences got used to me. They identified me in that one part, and they didn't want to see me in anything else, and they were right. I'd lost the fine talent I had through years of easy repetition, never learning a new part. For 35 to $40,000 net profit a season, like snapping your fingers, it's too great a temptation. And yet, before I bought the damn thing, I was considered one of the three or four young actors with the most artistic potential in America. I'd worked like hell. I loved the theater. I studied. Got rid of an Irish brogue you could cut with a knife. I loved Shakespeare for the joy of being alive in his great poetry. I could have been a great Shakespearean actor, I know that. In 1874, when Edwin Booth came to the theater in Chicago where I was leading man, he played Cassius to my Brutus one night, Iago to my Othello another night, and so on. The first night we played Othello, he said to the manager, that young man is playing Othello better than I ever did. That's from Booth, the greatest actor of his day or any other. And he was right. And I had life where I wanted it. And then a few years later, my good bad luck brought me to big money again. Uh, it was a grand romantic part. I knew I could play better than anyone else. But it was a big box office success from the start. And then life had me where it wanted me. Thirty-five to forty thousand dollars net profit per season. Fortune in those days, even in these. What the hell was it, I wonder, that I wanted to buy? Late day for regrets. Papa, I'm so glad you told me this. Hope it doesn't make you feel more contempt for me. The um, <clears throat> glare from the lights uh, hurts my eyes. <laughs> no point in making the electric company rich. On my solemn oath, Edmund. I'd gladly face not having an acre of land to call my own or a penny in the bank gladly look forward to dying in the poorhouse if I could look back on having been the great artist I might have been. What the devil are you laughing at? Oh. Oh, not at you, Papa. At life. So damn crazy. There's nothing wrong with life. The fault, dear Brutus, is not in the stars, but in we ourselves. But we are underlings. Ah, uh, the praise Edwin Booth gave my fellow. I had the manager write down his exact words. I kept it in my wallet for years. I wonder where it is now. I put it away carefully somewhere in the house. I think it's in the trunk in the attic with Mama's wedding dress. She's still moving around up there. Why doesn't she go to bed? Oh, sakes, forget it, Papa. Yes, she moves above and beyond us like a ghost haunting the and here we sit, straining our ears, listening for the slightest sound. The fog, the fog dripping off the eaves like the uneven tick of a rundown crazy clock. Or like the spattering of a trollop's tears into a puddle of stale beer on a honky-tonk tabletop. 
Not bad that last day. Original, Baudelaire, some credit. All my memories are connected with the sea. I remember this one time I was aboard a square head square rigger bound for Buenos Aires. Full moon in the trades, uh, old hooker driving 14 knots. I lay on the bowsprit facing the swell. Uh, I was caught up in the beauty and singing rhythm of it. For a moment, I lost myself. I actually lost my life. I, I was set free. I dissolved in the sea. I became white sails and flying spray, beauty, rhythm, moonlight in the ship. Oh, I belonged a future into a peace and unity and wild joy of something greater than my own life. God, if you want to put it that way. I was like a saint's vision of beatitude. Uh, like the veil of things as the scene drawn back by an unseen hand. For a moment, you see. And seeing the secret, you are the secret. And for a moment, there is meaning. And then the hand lets the veil fall. And you are alone, lost in a fog again stumble on towards nowhere for no particular reason. As it is, I will always be a stranger who never feels at home. Does not really want, is not really wanted. I never belong. I must always be a little in love with death. You have the makings of a poet, all right. But that morbid nonsense about not belonging and wanting to be Damn the lower the bat. Bad luck to him. Get him to bed, Edmund. Get the tongue like an adder when he's drunk and only losing my temper. I'm going out. What ho? What ho? Hey, 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 Nick's on the loud noise. Oh, I'm drunk as a fiddler's bitch kid. Oh, gee, I had a serious accident. Took advantage of the fog to way me in. Dark in here, too. What the hell is this, the morgue? Put some light on the subject. To hell with old Gaspard. Where's the old tightwad? He's out in the kitchen. Oh, you can't expect us to live in a black hole at Calcutta! Shh, hey, quiet, you. Oh, have I got the DTs? My God, it's real. <laughs> What's the matter with the old man tonight? Must be ossified to forget he left this out. All right, pass on out if you want to. Can't, that's trouble. I've had enough to sink a ship and can't sink. Here's open. Hey, shove over the bottle. I'll join you. Nope. None for you. Okay, brother. You're all I've left. Maybe no one else gives a damn if you die, but I do. Lay off it, you. Don't think I mean it? Drunken bull? Go ahead, kill yourself. See if I care. I know you care, Jamie. I'm going on the wagon, but not after tonight. Damn much has happened today. So. <laughs> no, I know you've had a lot of day. Well, that old guest part doesn't try to keep you up, booze. Probably give you a case to take with us at State Farm for pauper patients. Christ. This bastard did out for a father. Put him in a book and no one believed it. Papa's all right, but just try to understand it and keep your sense of humor. <sighs> well, last Thanksgiving, this one off with the lights out. You told Gaspard I got a hearty the sanatorium for charity town? Yes, I told him that I refused to go there. And he said I could go any place I wanted. Within reason, of course. Oh, yes, loud. Anything within reason. I mean, another charity dump. Gaspard, the miser and the bells. The party can play without working. You cut it out with that Gaspard stuff. I've heard it a all million right, times. All right, all right. If you're satisfied, let him get away with it. It's your funeral. I hope it won't be. So what you do uptown tonight? Go to Mamie Burns? Sure thing. <laughs> Where else can I go for suitable feminine companionship and love? Don't forget love. What's a man without a good woman's love? Goddamn hollow ghost. Then turning to my love, I said, the dead of dancing with the dead. The dust, whirling with the dust. And she, she heard the violin. She left my side and she went, love entered into the house of love. And suddenly, My love worth. <laughs> she must have been a ghost. <laughs> I guess which one of Mamie's charmers? I think they blessed me with a woman's love, kid. I thought I handle a laugh. Fat Violet. Fat Violet? <laughs> oh, God, she weighs a ton. What the hell did you pick her for? A joke? No joke. Very serious. 
By the time I got to Mamie's dump, I began to feel very sad about myself. You know, that's what the problems in the world. Uh, ready for a weep in any old womanly bosom? The other way, get some barley corn turns on the soft music inside you. As soon as I got in the door, Mamie began telling me all her problems. She beats her rotten business life. But she was going to give by the game. Customers didn't fall for by. The only reason she kept around was she could play the piano. Maybe by's been on drunks. Been too boiled to play. And she's been eating her out of house and home. And although she's a good-hearted dumbbell and she feels bad for her because she doesn't know how to, she's going to make a living, still business by business and da 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 and you know. <laughs> Squander a couple of your bucks to escort her upstairs. <laughs> With no dishonorable intention, whatever. Oh, no. I like him fat. <laughs> Not that fat. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> All I wanted was a heart to heart <laughs> on the infinite sour wine. Oh, poor boy. You must have recited dowsing and Kipling and Swinburne. Sure you know, thing. Oh, Barley corn playing stop music. She stood it for a while. She got good in school. Got the idea to took her upstairs for a joke. Gave me a grand balling out. Told me she was better than some cheap bum who recited poetry. She started to cry. So I felt bad for her, and I told her I loved her because she was fat. And because she wanted to believe in her. <laughs> Stayed with her to prove it. <sighs> Everything was fine. She told me she'd fallen hard for me. We cried a little more in the hallway. Oh, but Step Mamie burns. <laughs> she thought I got a little bug house. Harlots and hunted have pleasures their own to give. The vulgar herd can never understand. Oh, this <laughs> night has opened my eye to a great career in store for me and my boy. I'll give the art of acting back to the performing seals, which are its most perfect expression. By applying my God-given talents, I'll reach the pinnacle of my success. I'll be the lover of the fat woman in the barn and Bailey Stark. <laughs> you. Imagine me. Something or Fat woman's bosom and ants on her shirt. <clears throat> if I were hanged on the highest too, oh mother of mine, oh mother of mine, this love will follow me still. Shut up, you. Where is the old hop? They've gone to sleep. You bet. Say that enough. But God, Jamie, no matter how drunk you are, that's no excuse. I'm sorry I hit you like that. You know I don't fight like that. <laughs> it's all right. Glad you did. There you go. I'd like to cut it up. I told you it's because I feel so damn drunk. This time, Mama really had me fooled. <laughs> I think I know what we should do the game. <laughs> I know how you I know how you feel. Stop it, Jamie. Stop it. I've known about Mama so much longer than you. I will never forget the first time I got wise. Caught her in the act with an eyeball. I've ever had. I know this guy's kidding. I know that, Jamie. <laughs> I suppose you're thinking. I'm thinking puppy wolf. <laughs> Can't knock him up harder. <laughs> if you ever die, Mama and I would get everything you say. So I'm probably Shut up! Shut up! What the hell put that in your head? Don't start playing the wise guy with me. I learn more in life than you'll ever know. Just because you eat a lot of high broad junk, don't think you could fool me. You're an overgrown kid. Mama's baby. Papa's pet. You've been getting a swell pet lately. Over nothing. A couple of poems in a hip town newspaper. <laughs> I used to write better stuff than that for the lip magazine in college. <laughs> you better wake up. You're not sitting in your river's mouth fire. <laughs> you 
a couple of hit-tom boobs, Flotty would bunk about to your future. I don't mean it. Cry, I don't mean it. No one's proud of you, Star, if you know that. Hell, why shouldn't I be proud? It's purely selfish. You reflect credit on me. <laughs> I had more to do with bringing you up than anyone. If I first got you interested in reading poetry, Swinburne, for example, who first wised you up about women, I did. Because I wanted to write, I planted it in your noodle, but someday you'd write. You're more than my brother. You're my Frankenstein. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm your Frankenstein. <laughs> so come on, let's have a drink, you crazy No, man. I'll have a drink. My you. Good brother. Gotta protect you. Don't let the sanatorium get this far in your face. Now you can beat it standing on your hands. Six months, you'll be in the pink. Listen, kid, you'll be going away soon. There's something I gotta tell you. I should have told you long ago for your own good. Mom and Pop were right about me. The worst of it is, I did it on purpose. <laughs> shut up! Look, shut up, you! I don't want to hear this shit! You listen to me! Oh, I did it on purpose to make a bum of you. Poor me, you did. Party was the big thing! <laughs> But my mistakes, you know, my mistakes, but good by comparison. Made whores fascinating vampires. Instead of poor, diseased, ignorant swamp, they really are! Made work a sucker game. Never wanted you to succeed. Always wanted you to fail. Always jealous of your mama's baby off the back. Jesus! Sure being born, though mama started on dope. Say that! Oh, I know it's not your fault. It's all the same. God damn you, I can't help but hit your guts. Jesus, Jamie, you're going crazy! You know, I love you more than I need you. Stop! Get over here. I'm talking to you. Well, I wanted to stay. What if you become the greatest success in the world? Crazy. Think it over. Think it over when you're away from me in that sanatorium. You gotta make up your mind. Or you get me out of your life. Tell people. Credit. I told you for your own good. With greater luck, I've no man than this. He stayed with his brother by himself. <sighs> I feel better now. It's gone to confession. Last drink. 
the old KO. <laughs> But I've been warning you for years. Now maybe you'll heed it, you hear it from his own mouth. But don't take it too hard. He loves to exaggerate the worst part of himself when he's drunk. But he's devoted to you. One good thing left in him. Sweet spectacle for me, my firstborn son, who I hoped would bear my name and honor and dignity, who showed such early promise. Wait. What are you staring at? Look in my face, Papa. My name is Midasen. My mouth will call no more. Too late, farewell. I'm well aware of that, and God knows I don't want to look at your face. You got a great idea for you, Papa. Why don't you put on revival to the bells this season? Great part in the field without any makeup. Oh, death hard! Jamie, shut up! I claim Edwin Booth never put on a performance as a performing seal. They don't pretend at any rate. They admit they're just hands working for their daily. You lover! Papa, if you want to start a row, that'll bring down Mama. And Jane, go back to sleep. You've shut off your mouth enough already. Kid, I'm too tired to argue. Oh. Oh, I wish you'd go to sleep. You could all get to sleep. Oh, I catch you up on all you. You know, old and finished. Take a few weeks. Redman, you might do the same. <laughs> the mad scene! Enter Ophelia! <laughs> you bastard. You bastard. Good boy, Edmund! The dirty blackguard! His own mother! I'll kick you out in the gutter, but Consumption. No. You, 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 you mustn't try to touch me, dear. You, you mustn't try to hold me. It isn't right. I, I'm going to become a nun. Oh, it's <laughs> no damn good. Let us go hence. Go hence. She will us. Sing all once more together. Surely she. She too remembers days. Turn, a little tortoise, sigh, but we, we are hence, we are gone, so we are not there now. Nay, though all may seem like pity on me, she will not sing. I was fool to pay attention. It's the poison that I've never known it. She drowned herself in it as deep as. Send me that bottle, Jamie. Stop reciting the damn morbid poetry. You won't have it in my house. I had a talk with Mother Elizabeth. Oh, I faint on her. I love her dearly. I know it may be sinful, but I, I love her more than my own mother. Her kind, 
his blue eyes and they look right into your heart and you can't hide from her. But all, all the same, I, I don't think she was so understanding this time. She, I, I told her that I, I wanted to become a nun and that I had prayed to be sure <coughs> that I'd be worthy. She said, no, if you're so sure that you wouldn't mind putting yourself through a test by going home after you graduate and living as other girls live by going to parties and dances and if after a year or two if you still feel the same way then we can come back and we'll talk. I never believed that the Holy Mother would give me such advice. I said, of, of course, I'll, I'll do anything that she asked. in love with James Harold. I was so happy for a time. 